antioxidants can either protect you from cancer or fuel your cancer. Here's exactly what you need to know. In this video, I'm showing you when to take antioxidant supplements, what to do about antioxidants in your food, and what antioxidant supplements are best for cancer survivors. People say that antioxidants are the key to fighting cancer. That may be true, but they can also be dangerous if used incorrectly. It's possible for antioxidants to protect your cancer cells from treatment and actually help it grow. So what's right for you? When should you take antioxidants? And when could they cause you serious harm? It's so important to know what's right for you. Watching this video could help you stay cancer free. Whether you've just been diagnosed with cancer, in cancer treatment, or even years out from your diagnosis, this video is a must watch for you. Antioxidants play a critical role for cancer survivors because of free radicals. Let me show you how. On one side, we have free radicals, and on the other side, we have antioxidants. At the root of what causes cancer is free radicals. Free radicals are highly reactive molecules that are naturally formed in your body during the cell process. Free radicals are generated in your body every single day. There's no way to completely avoid free radicals, but we can limit them or neutralize them. More on that in a little bit. Free radicals do naturally occur in your body, but there are certain things in your environment and your food that can increase your risk of free radicals, exposing you to many, many more and putting you in a state of oxidative stress. Things like air pollution or cigarette smoke, they can form because of your food. Eating things like highly processed food or drinking alcohol. It's true that your food can either fight or fuel cancer. Even if you were living an extremely clean and healthy lifestyle in a rural community away from air pollution, you would still be forming free radicals. It's a natural process that happens to all of us, but there are also lots of ways that they can be formed. High blood sugar, excessive sun exposure, bacterial, viral, or fungal infections, excessive intake of iron, copper, magnesium, or zinc, even excessive intake of antioxidants or a deficiency in antioxidants can cause free radicals. Phew, that feels really overwhelming. There are so many ways. So why is it linked to cancer? Here's why. Free radicals are incredibly unstable and they're eager to react with molecules in our bodies. That includes interacting with DNA, protein, or lipids. This process is called oxidative stress. It damages cells in your body, and this is what leads to cancer. The most up-to-date research suggests that free radicals actually attack our DNA, and this is what leads to alterations in our DNA and potentially cancer. Now, of course, free radicals is a natural process that happens to all of us, so why do some of us get cancer and some of us don't. Our bodies have a defense mechanism to neutralize free radicals, but excessive exposure to them or compromised levels of antioxidants, well, this puts you in a vulnerable situation. The balance is disrupted and it increases your risk of cancer. This is exactly where we start using free radicals to our advantage. If you've been diagnosed with cancer, then you wanna make sure you're doing everything with your nutrition, movement, and exercise to increase your amount of antioxidants. All cancer survivors should be focused on this. Using your food and exercise to increase your antioxidants is very safe, regardless of what stage of cancer treatment or recovery you're in. Including antioxidant-rich foods in your nutrition, like berries or leafy green vegetables, will significantly reduce the amount of free radicals, get you out of oxidative stress, and protect you from cancer. This is protecting your cells from the potential DNA damage. You also want to minimize your exposure to external sources of free radicals. Avoid smoking, alcohol, and protect yourself from environmental pollution. This can all help limit your free radicals. Plus, exercise can help reduce free radicals. We know that consistent, long-term exercise can actually lower the amount of free radicals and get you out of oxidative stress. Consistent exercise actually boosts your immune system. Okay, so that's antioxidants from your food and your exercise, but what about antioxidants from supplements? Are they always safe? You need to use these with caution. Antioxidant supplements should absolutely be avoided during chemotherapy and radiation. Taking antioxidant supplements during chemo and radiation could actually protect your cancer cells against the treatment and make the overall treatment less effective. A study published in 2020 looking at breast cancer survivors found that women who were taking antioxidant supplements during their chemotherapy actually had a higher risk of a cancer recurrence 
and overall death. That was compared to those who were not taking antioxidant supplements. That means despite their best efforts in taking supplements and trying to support their body through treatment, they actually ended up with worse outcomes. The women that took antioxidant supplements during treatment, that's vitamin A, E, carotenoids, and coenzyme Q10, they actually had a higher risk of cancer recurrence. It increased by 41%. After a publication like this, which is obviously quite scary, you wanna make sure you avoid antioxidants during chemotherapy. Chemotherapy would be considered IV cytotoxic treatment. It's also recommended to avoid antioxidants during radiation therapy for a very similar reason. The antioxidants may protect the cancer cells against radiation. Now, antioxidants are believed to be safe during anti-hormonal treatment. That's things like tamoxifen, letrozole, exemestane, or anastrozole. If you're taking another form of treatment or immunotherapy, then it's best to check with your team to get their specific recommendations on whether antioxidant supplements are safe. If you took a multivitamin during your chemotherapy treatment and now you're worried that you might have actually protected your cancer cells against chemo, well, don't be worried because the dose matters. The amount of antioxidants you get from a multivitamin is actually quite low compared to the amount you would get from an antioxidant supplement. Let me give you a really straightforward example. Vitamin C IV infusions are quite popular popular among people with cancer. Of course, a megadose of antioxidant supplements is quite appealing when we know your body is under oxidative stress. The typical vitamin C infusion is around 2,500 milligrams of vitamin C. Now, of course, it can be anywhere from 1,000 milligrams to 50,000 milligrams, but 2,500 would be a typical dose. To get the same amount of vitamin C from oranges, a food that's known for being high in vitamin C, you probably haven't eaten 50 oranges this year. And that's the difference. The dose matters. If you give yourself mega doses of antioxidants while you're in cancer treatment, it can actually protect your cancer cells against that treatment. So no antioxidant supplements during chemo or radiation, but they are safe during cancer recovery. That is depending on the long-term cancer medication you're on to reduce the risk of recurrence. Okay, so what about during cancer recovery? What should you do about antioxidant supplements once you're officially done with cancer treatment? We know that cancer survivors are low in antioxidants. It makes sense, right? You've been put under oxidative stress for a very long time. Even before you knew you had cancer, your body was fighting off cancer cells. Then we gave you chemo, radiation, surgeries, sometimes multiple surgeries. Your body had to endure all of this, and that's a lot of oxidative stress. At the end of treatment, when you come out the other side, we know you're gonna be low in antioxidants. We know that, but here's what to do about it. The first thing to do is to optimize your nutrition. Supplements are called supplements for a reason. They're designed to supplement your nutrition. If your food or your diet is all over the place and you're not quite yet making the best decisions to support cancer recovery and remission, then this is where you need to invest your efforts. So many women make the mistake of searching for a supplement to help lower the risk of cancer. But in reality, a supplement isn't going to give you the best results. It's actually your diet. It's thought that when you eat food with a variety of antioxidants, they actually work synergistically together. Meaning that if you eat a combination of fruits and vegetables, they actually work together to give you better protection than if you were to take a supplement with just one isolated ingredient. You feel like your nutrition is aligned and you feel like you're doing everything you can here, then the next step might be to look at a supplement. Let me show you a few popular options here. Antioxidants are either categorized as water-soluble or fat-soluble. Water-soluble antioxidants perform their actions in the fluid inside or outside of the cell, whereas fat-soluble antioxidants actually act on the cell membrane. Both are important. Let me give you an example. Vitamin C, a water-soluble nutrient, is an essential nutrient where vitamin E, a fat-soluble antioxidant, actually provides protection for the cell membrane. But this doesn't actually mean to start taking vitamin C and vitamin E. Instead, let's look at the best options for you. Here are the options that have the most evidence in supporting cancer survivors. First, we have to talk about vitamin C. Vitamin C infusions have become very popular, especially among cancer survivors. They help boost up the antioxidant levels in your body. If you're known to be depleted in antioxidants, then it would make sense 
to give your body a boost of antioxidants, a pulse dose to get you back to baseline. But when you look at the literature surrounding vitamin C infusions, the positive literature is actually pretty sparse. Although there's been a number of studies on vitamin C infusions in cancer survivors, there's only been one study that showed positive but weak results. That study was among ovarian cancer survivors, which showed it potentially reduces the risk of recurrence and improves overall survival. Although the positive evidence is pretty sparse, it does appear that high-dose vitamin C infusions are actually quite safe. But instead of an IV infusion, there might be something that actually works a bit better, and that's vitamin C tablets. Most of the evidence around vitamin C tablets comes from breast cancer survivors. It's been shown across a number of studies that taking vitamin C supplements after breast cancer actually improves your overall survival. So instead of a vitamin C infusion, I would opt for a vitamin C tablet. So vitamin C is water soluble, but what about fat soluble? Well, for that, then we have to look at vitamin D. Vitamin D has been very well studied in terms of reducing your risk of cancer. A 2021 meta-analysis looked at antioxidant supplements among cancer survivors and found this about vitamin D. It was actually associated with lower total mortality. If you were taking vitamin D, you were actually less likely to die from cancer, but also less likely to die from any cause. So if you really wanted to focus on correcting your antioxidant levels after cancer, then you first need to focus on vitamin C and vitamin D. That would be an excellent place to start. But don't forget that I did mention you first need to focus on your nutrition. That's exactly why I've linked up this next video here on the best foods for cancer survivors. Click the link here, I'll see you in the next video.